Hi everyone, welcome back again to the EV Puzzle. We're having a quieter day today. Uh, we're going to stay in, it's a bit grey and murky outside. Let's have a quick look. We've been out for a walk with Cracker already and uh, got a bit damp. I thought while I was having, while I was having a coffee uh, in the kitchen I'd just uh, share an update with you, share a thought. Yeah, uh, battery degradation and um, protecting your battery, it's something that I'd thought about before and something that I think I've covered in one of my videos before. But as time's gone on and I've learnt more and heard more, I've sort of come to the conclusion that I honestly don't know what to believe and who to believe. Because there are two ways of looking at it, aren't there? There's, um, will the battery degrade so that it doesn't drive as far? And if so, by how much? And can I control that by how I charge, with what sort of charger, and um, how low or high I take the state of charge? Or is it to do with charging cycles? You know, just like how many hours a light bulb can last, you can judge a battery by how many uh, charging cycles it can go through before you expect uh, it to either fail or degradation. So which, which should we believe? Well, I've seen other videos here on the internet um, about charging cycles and how you should protect your battery by not charging as much, again, to protect um, the battery life. So let's ask the question, you know, if I drive my car every day and it loses roughly 10% of its battery charge, would I be better off charging it every day to top up that 10% again so it stays in more the middle range or the 70-80% range? Or would I be better charging it once a week um, for the extra 50% and therefore it's being charged less occasions but to a greater percent? What's better for my battery? Now I do have the choice, so which should I do? And the answer is, I don't know. Um, my gut feel is the number of iterations of charge don't matter because your car's charging all the time. It's charging on regenerative braking. So whether the battery is going into a state of charge and adding um, capacity to it can't necessarily be bad for the battery. Otherwise, why would they have invented regenerative braking? Because surely that will damage the battery. So the number of iterations, my gut feel and logic tells me doesn't matter. Um, so. Whether that's true or not, I don't quite know because you've got this charging cycle thing, but are charging cycles the number of iterations of charge or are they the number of iterations of how much charge you put in, i.e. the equivalent of zero to 100%? That's um, one cycle. So would 10 um, top up battery charges of 10% equal one cycle? What's the truth um, and where do you get that information from? The same goes with um, the charging, um, what would you call it, the charging regime, yeah, your regime of charging. I think I covered this in one of my earlier videos, and my plan was to go 80-20%, and that's part of the reason for going for a larger battery, because if I'm only charging between the 80 and 20%, that's 60% of the battery capacity. So with 60% of the battery capacity, um, that's a big impact on a smaller battery. Well, should I believe that 80-20 rule or myth or whatever it is, should I actually follow it? Is it okay to take your car below 20% or will it damage the battery? Or is it okay to charge above um, 80% and will that damage the battery? And I'm starting to wonder whether, for example, the 80% issue is nothing to do with protecting the battery but is effectively a myth because it's more efficient to charge your battery to only 80% when you're on a trip and you're rapid charging because the rapid charger slows down. And if the rapid charger slows down at 80%, you'd actually be better off getting back in your car and driving and then charging again later rather than sat there waiting on a slower rate of charge until it's full. Perhaps that's the real reason why people are recommending not to go above 80%. Or is it? And uh, the same for going below 20% or 10%. You know, what is it? Is 10% okay? Is 20% okay? How much spare capacity is there on the battery? You know, we're being told the Hyundai Kona has 64 kilowatt hours available to use. So how big is the battery? Is it 66, 68, 70? How big is the battery? Uh, I'm not sure after watching Bjorn's videos about his estimations as to how much that is because at some points in his videos he's estimating that available capacity is above 64. Well, uh, 
Is it a bit of guesswork at the moment? Do we need more tests, more reviews, more data to prove it? Or do we just simply ask the question? Well, there's an idea, isn't it? Let's ask Hyundai. Let's ask Hyundai, not about the battery size, but let's ask about charging cycles and how to protect and preserve your battery. And this is what Hyundai said. Here is the reply from our technicians regarding your battery query. Unfortunately, we do not have access to detailed information on the charging requirements or charging cycle definitions. All that we can offer is that the HV battery is warranted for eight years, 125,000 miles, against manufacturing defects or degradation that results in the battery's state of health dropping below 70%. This is irrespective of usage or charging cycles. So basically, if I read that correctly, they're saying, don't worry about it. Um, it's warranted anyway, um, and it's not gonna go below 70% degradation, so just use it how you want and don't worry about cycles or any of those issues. Well, do I believe that? Should I follow that advice? I mean, they replied quite quickly, so I guess that's UK technicians, not Korean technicians. So do they know what they're talking about? Hyundai don't seem to have known very much about what's going on in the ordering process. Um, they seem to have been very, very short of information from Korea. So do they really know? Should I follow that advice and not worry about it? Maybe. I mean, it's only 30% degradation, but is that what they're saying? It might degrade up to 30%. They haven't said, basically, so it's not really an answer. So what else do we do? You know, we've looked at the internet, we've listened to other people, and I sort of think a lot of it's myth and not, a lot of it's not really true because of the link between lithium ion batteries and how they're used in phones versus specific lithium ion batteries in cars. Perhaps they really have been designed so you don't have to worry about it. So what's the truth? I don't know. So if all else fails, what do we do? Well, we read the manual and the manual um, has 391 references to battery. So it's good that there's a search facility on the site I used. And uh, I went through them all, every single one, and found just a couple that made a little sense. So should we follow this advice? Use of DC charge should be minimized in order to help prolong high voltage battery life. So they're basically saying that fast charging, DC charging is fine, but it will degrade the battery if you use it frequently. Now they don't describe what frequently is. Um, in fact, one, one piece of wording scared me because it said um, monthly or more, and I misread that. And did you just mishear that? Monthly or more. Basically they're saying make sure you charge the battery um, at least once a month or more, um, rather than as I was starting to read it, oh, you can only charge, rapid charge once a month. But no, 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 they, they don't mention in the manual the, the time scales and how many frequencies of rapid charging is good or bad for the car. What they've said is um, constant rapid charging is not good for your battery and uh, won't prolong the life of your battery. So what else have they said? If the high voltage battery charge below is below 20%, you can keep the high voltage battery performance in optimal condition if you charge the high voltage battery to 100%. Once a month or more is recommended. So. That actually sounds like they're not just saying charge the battery once a month, they're saying charge to 100%. It's actually in the manual, charge to 100%. And it's in the same context that they're talking about preserving the battery in optimal condition. So charging to 100% can't be bad. Can it, surely? I mean, they've actually specifically mentioned it um, in the context of preserving the condition of the battery that at least once a month you should charge to 100%. And it was specific that it mentions 100%. So does that go with my thought that it's a bit of a myth on the 80% and is that just charging efficiency, that charging to 100% is absolutely fine? Have I now gained some more range because I can charge 20% to 100% and not worry about the condition of the battery? So here's another quotation. Battery performance and durability can deteriorate if the DC charger is used constantly. And then the manual went on further to basically talk about um, charging when it gets to a low state of charge. Now it did specifically mention that uh, when you get to a lower state of charge, you should charge up as soon as possible. So it didn't specifically say that 
um, running your car down to zero battery or 10% battery would degrade the performance of the battery in any respect. But leaving it there and not recharging as quickly as you could, that might well degrade the performance of your battery. So which should I believe again? Is consuming the energy in the battery down to 20% or 10% or less, is that bad for the battery? Or is it only bad if you don't charge up straight away? So again, I don't actually know. There isn't an answer to this, is there? We've got to make it up as we go along because how many examples are there really of the same car and the same battery with multiple people doing the same opposite things and can we look at those results? For example, how many Leaf owners, Leaf One owners are watching these videos and how many are rapid charging every day? What's your uh, battery uh, degradation like and uh, state of health of the battery? versus how many of you watching with those same Leaf uh, One versions are only using the car backwards and forwards to the shops and not rapid charging, etc. and you're charging at home and you're keeping it between, I don't know, 80, 20, 90, 10 um, and you're looking after the battery. Well, what's your state of health on the battery after five, six years? And is it any different to those people that have been rapid charging? Without that sort of comparison, how do we know? How do we know what's true and what's not? Because we're working on myth of people um, perhaps linking typical lithium ion battery um, characteristics to the car batteries, which might well be different because they've been designed with slightly different chemistry to be more robust. Or should we follow what Hyundai UK have returned and said, which is basically don't worry about it, it's warranted. Or should we follow the manual, which specifically mentions that charging to 100% is good at least once a month or more, DC charging, rapid charging is bad if you do it a lot and if you go to a low state of charge charge up uh, as soon as you can which bit should we believe um, has the manual been written by um, people that know about the actual physical studies so i honestly don't know the answer um, i'd like to still get a specific answer knowing where it came from from hyundai and get it from korea directly um, even if it perhaps comes from LG. Um, yeah, I'd really like to know uh, the truth about what works and what doesn't work. And no, I'm not about to go and rapid charge every day just to see if it degrades my battery. But what I will do is probably take my best guess about preserving the battery and try to charge on that regime. And that will probably be, don't leave it empty, don't leave it close to empty, but that makes sense anyway, because I'm gonna wanna charge it. Uh, and don't rapid charge it, uh, at least very often. So I'm hoping to preserve my battery as much as possible. So it will be interesting in many years to come to compare the state of health of my battery in the Kona versus somebody that perhaps has got the Kona to do commuting and they're going to rapid charge every day. So that's what's on my mind today. Um, shall I charge to 100%? Do you know, I think I'm gonna be less um, cautious about charging above 80 and all the way up to 100% based on what I've read. It doesn't sound like um, I should be apprehensive of that whatsoever. And should I be apprehensive of um, going down to low states of charge? No, so long as I charge back up as soon as possible. So I won't be leaving the car overnight on a low state of charge. So that's what I found out. Um, that's my thought for the day um, as I'm heading towards uh, the Kona arriving. And uh, I hope you enjoyed that chat. Uh, what do you think? Have you got any examples of actual usage and actual degradation of um, car batteries, whether it be Leaf or um, Zoe or BMW i3 or Ionic or anything. Um, would love to hear from you. Leave a comment below. Anyway, thanks again for watching. Thanks for subscribing, everyone. Can you believe, by the way, subscribers? I'm over 900 now, approaching the thousand, and I haven't even got an electric car yet. Yep, <laughs> it won't be long. A couple of weeks and that Hyundai Kona will be arriving. Keep watching, and uh, it'll be the Kona review soon. See you soon, everyone. Bye.